Hello there, lovely sword people. Stefan and Martin here today for you to present you again some combat with two swords. So around a year ago, we already published all the plays of Marozzo on his dual swords. But that material isn't too approachable for beginners. So today we are going to present you a couple of exercises for beginners to learn to wield dual swords. And actually in the beginning you don't really need two swords, but you mainly need to train your offhand, your second hand. And that's what we are going to do today. We are going to learn to parry everything with the left sword while simultaneously attacking with the right. So, okay, so let's look at the parries that Morozzo presents us for the left sword. So for example, against a mandrito, so a strike from Stefan's right to his left, so to the left side of myself, we can, of course, parry in guardia di testa. So with the point up and the hand extended. Another possibility, would be to parry with our own reverso. So with the strike from my right to my left. Because remember, reverso, mandrito, all the positions inside, outside, these are all relative to the hand in which you're wielding the sword. So if you're a right-hander, a mandrito comes with a right sword from your right, but with the left sword, a reverso comes from your right because reverso is a backhand strike. And again, the outside for my right sword would be here on my right side, the inside on my left. And for the left sword, it's mirrored. And that goes for all positions in Marozzo as well. So if you have troubles to understand the text, that's maybe why. Okay, so a reverso with our left sword, and that could be a half reverso or a full reverso. So I could just go with a powerful reverso, or maybe if it's a thrust or a, um, a lighter blow, probably not with a spada duimani, then you might be able to parry this with the false edge as well. Okay, next. If Stefan throws a reverso, so to my right side, I again go into guardia di testa, just the hanging version of it. Because remember, Guardi di Testa can be point up, it can be point to the side, and it can be point down. Morozzo all mentions, especially this version as depicted, and this version he describes as well. So Guardi di Testa really is just guarding the head, guard of the head. So once again, Guardi di Testa in a hanging fashion. And you can use this parry again for a reverso to your forward leg as well. So if Stefan strikes to my forward leg, I can again use Guardia di Testa, just a low one. You uh, might also call this a true edge hanging parry on your right or your inside. The Bolognese masters also give us the fourth edge parry on the inside. So this would be a possibility as well, but this one isn't mentioned in Marozzo's Two Swords again, so uh, you can use it at your own discretion. But it is in the rest of the text, of course. This leaves us, so we have Mandrito to our head, Reverso to our head, Reverso to our leg. This leaves us with the Mandrito to our leg. And in the section on Two Swords, Marozzo tells us to go into Guardia di Fianco. And Guardi di Fianco is depicted with the two-handed sword and it's like a, a position a bit like Porta di Ferro but with the dominant leg leading so it's of course uh, depicted for, for the right hand and the sword maybe to the side and more or less horizontally and maybe a bit to the inside. Right, so maybe a bit, so probably like, maybe like this, it's depicted. So for the left side, it's probably looks something like this. And then there you see it's again a false edge parry to the uh, outside. Okay, just like 
we can do a false edge parry to the inside, we can do a false edge parry to the outside. The tricky part is that Marazzo tells us that we started in Porta di Ferro Alta and then there's a lift up with the fist. So uh, he says to pull your fist up into Guardi di Fianco. But a thing that we're often missing is that there's a step between us. So he says, um, from there, from Porta di Ferro Alta, expose your left leg. And then if he strikes the mandrito to the left leg, then pull up the fist into Guardia di Fianco. So this might be just an invitation where you put down your hand a bit to from there lift it up again. And then this play makes perfect sense. Okay, so from here, pull up, you uh, parry the false edge. The nice thing about this angle here is that since you're pointing towards the incoming force, since in, into the incoming blow, the opponent will slide into your strong and you have a fairly secure position. And from there, if you don't feel safe, you can of course then lift up again as well and establish a higher bind on this side. So once again, with the false edge parry, that's it. And of course, again, this one isn't in his two swords part, but it's uh, again all over the sources in the single sword part or with the sword and buckler. You could do with the left sword a reverse ridopio, so a true edge parry on your outside as well. So no problem at all. Again, you should try at least to point a bit into the incoming blow. If you don't do this, this parry gets really weak. And if your opponent steps into your, uh, into you, you might get hit on the leg anyway. So here I would need to withdraw it. Okay, so these are all the parries. Once again, from the upper right, from the upper left, lower left, and lower right. These are the parries. So, and from here, we want to use our right sword in the same tempo, in the same motion. And we're going to use it in the simplest way that is imaginable, and that is the punta ferma Morozzo likes to use. And punta ferma is nothing else than to walk the thrust into the body of your opponent while just stepping. So, once again, if I parry here, I just walk the point into my opponent. And I might be a bit more gentle to Stefan as he's not wearing a mask. And I really do walk it into his flank as Morozzo tells us. Or, from the other side, once again, I just walk the point in. And on the lower right, <laughs> And you see, this isn't uh, too bad of a position because while I didn't catch the, uh, the opponent's blow, my lower sword covers my lower side and I would be able to walk the point in anyway, but let's do it a bit more proper. So you can also do it like this while parrying with the left sword and truly walking the point with the right sword in. And from the other side, once again as well. And the important bit about this parry and repose is that it's not too tempy, it's not two motions. It's not, if Stefan attacks me, it's not one and two, but it's happening in the same tempo. So once again, it's one. One tempo, one motion, one parry and counter in the same tempo. Okay, and if you're familiar with the walking the point into your opponent, you can then progress to a bit more complex counters, uh, which is not too complex actually, but you can parry and strike in the same motion. So once again, you could also go for the mandrito or the reverso, or if we are low, maybe an imbrocata, or from the other side, also to the, the false edge to the hand. That's all fine and dandy, okay? And from there, you can practice with your partner a bit more in fluent motion. Let them throw any attack to you that they want, even thrusts. 
and you learn to parry everything with your left sword while simultaneously, in the same tempo, attacking them. Okay, so we hope this first lesson is helpful to you, especially if you're a beginner in dual wheeling. We hope to see you in the next one. Until then, train hard and ciao.